Hey gang, now that one tank is emptied and the other is refilled, let's continue. So, yeah, sorry I'm a little late. Uh, oh, no problem. Um, no problem. It's uh, so dreary here. It's been raining oh, and wow. raining. Still. Yeah, and it's supposed to rain until 3 o'clock in the morning. But um, I want to hear about your... Your co your the, your debut of your co host yesterday. How did it go? So, um, what did yeah. you talk about? Uh, I need to know. Kind of, sort of political stuff. I mean, it was a lot of. Um, okay. Damn it! I thought I put show notes together for today already to get started, but I guess not. Um, that's a previous one. Okay. Well, um, I know what I wanted to grill you about. Uh, uh -huh. to that. Good. Yesterday. That's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I didn't even know when it was. Well, all right. Well, let's start with that. Um, we'll come yeah. back to the show. Uh, I get a, a message on Facebook over the weekend from Amy. Oh. And she is beside herself. Mm -hmm. And I have she's, no idea what the hell she's talking about. She scolded me. She said, Mom, and, and it's the, funny that you that you presented me as a tattler. <laughs> and I don't think I, it was a tattler at all. No, I know. But she is a very, 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 very sensitive soul. So I understand where she's coming from, but I must not probably mention her again. So. Oh, I think that brings me a challenge. <laughs> oh, like, dear. Right now. Okay, well, it's well, on you. I had then. to explain to her. I'm like, I, I I didn't even know what you were talking about. Yeah. So, meaning she, I didn't know what she was talking about. Correct. I and understand. And when I finally figured it out, I'm like, oh no, that's that's no. That was you're fun. fine. Yeah, that was yeah, fun. But, but also, I I tried to make sure she fully understood that you already know that the conversation between her and you is fair game. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know we talk about anything. Yeah, that yeah. is kind of the the the, the bit of a uh, sprinkle of Howard Stern on it. You know, yeah. well, we talk and, about everything, everything. And you know, and I, you know, I, yeah, we need to go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, just and more so, fun. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm entitled. This, Mom gets scolded. <laughs> She'll hate it. <laughs> well, uh, it, it was about it was all about this me drinking the the flavored mm -hmm. whiskey. Yes, and, yes. And when she finally, I uh, I I basically put it all together. Mm -hmm. That, and I remembered because that episode had obviously already happened and been released. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 that's good. Keep going. You're fine. <laughs> And she's just like, no, I, I, you don't have to respond to me. Please, you know, continue. Right, our, right. Friendship. our friendship's great. You're doing great. You're fine. <laughs> well, Tell I her more shit. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, she's a very sensitive soul. So she didn't want to be, you know, she didn't want to be, what do you say, a tattler in any kind of way. So she isn't. And I knew that you would really like it. That yeah. she mentioned that, that I, I, I mentioned totally it. I mentioned it because I wanted you to know we had a, we had a subscriber. We have a loyal fan. Yes. And I figured that would make you happy. Much more so loyal it. to me than you, apparently. <laughs> I guess so. Anyway, so mom is scolded. That's what we're doing here, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell me a little bit about your episode, your premiere episode with your new co-host last night yep. on the she You're, is, uh, yeah. uh, her name's Dina Kennedy, and she mm -hmm. is um, Monday and Wednesdays. Okay. And Michaela is today and Thursday. Um, Get and out. Thursday. You have and several co-hosts. Episode, yes. I, I'm I, I, excited. I, I, there's three of you now. Yeah. I'm so yeah. excited for you. I'm a rap star. I get all, I got, well, I'm not going <laughs> to say the word, but I get, I, I get all my ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So what did you talk about? Let's give a little uh, so preview she, here. Dina and I met on a, another show that uh, 
it is on like Facebook and YouTube and whatever that I put on to Yerg's radio on Saturday nights mm -hmm. called the misfits. Oh, right. I think we've okay. talked about that. You know, everybody yes. there is, is without is. question a misfit. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're medically retired. They're in a wheelchair. They're amputees. Mm -hmm. They were homeless. You name it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dina's on there. Um, I don't know what her issue is, but you know she's as functional as anybody, mm -hmm. and she's very well researched and mm -hmm. very well spoken, mm -hmm. and um, very much for the most part a Trump supporter. So Excuse in our me? very she is. Our, yeah, she yeah. Is. He's at least conservative. I think she's coming around to realize he's not a good candidate. Wow. And I'm sorry. Um, no, we actually get past that. You know, she obviously knows I'm gay. She's very accepting of that. Um, mm -hmm. And what I liked about her was our very first episode, she and I went at it. Did you? And it was pretty intense and pretty heated. Yeah. Whoa. And it actually. I, oh, she told me. I just learned this last night. But the episode of The Misfits that we were both on, that first episode, was removed by YouTube. Get out. They took it off. And yeah, it was removed by YouTube, not by wow. Glenn. Uh, Glenn, uh, Sportcat Jackson, uh, protested it and, and filed a, 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 um, whatever, a, an appeal. And uh, they reviewed it and put it back up. Oh. But apparently, due to whatever it was in our, and I don't think I don't think it was anything vulgar. Um, was it political? There was another one. Was it political? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it was COVID oriented. It was um, Trump oriented, and that's that's just me, uh, you know, remembering off the top of my head. Okay. It wasn't my show, so I don't even have show notes for it or anything like that. Um, yeah. But. Uh, um, I was basically a guest as the owner of Yerg's radio and it was, I think our first episode on Yerg's radio. Wow. And, you know, he had to say, Hey, this is already on other venues. Yeah. Um, if you're going to take this down and leave it down, uh, you're going to look like the pussy uh -huh. <laughs> over nothing. Mm -hmm. And they put it back up. But then we were on another one. Um, we were all on another show who, who used to be on Yerg's radio. I, I cut him because he's boring. He, he's not that good of a presenter. Uh, it was a guy called Eight Questions With, and the guy's name was uh, Patrick Sullivan. Okay. Um, he's just, you think you're bad with tech. <laughs> it's even I'm worse. Bad. And he's My. doing shit live. And you know, he, he's got a bit of a following, but I mean, they're not people. His thing is about, he, you know, he talks about Hollywood and he has like C and D list actors on, you know, trying to promote something. Okay. And if you want somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you talk to him and say, yeah, talk to my, talk to Jane, you know, she's my you know booking agent and she's my <laughs> agent. And, and then I got to talk to you and you're going <laughs> to tell me what the fee is. Mm-hmm. And that's how I'm going to have Arnold Schwarzenegger on my show because I'm not big enough to have Arnold Schwarzenegger on my show. Right. You know, if I, if I want him, I got to pony up. Mm -hmm. But all these other actors who are also trying to make it, you know, they don't care. They want to get on as much exposure as possible. And the thing about his show is industry people aren't the ones watching it. It's other, you know, I've got nothing else to do on a whatever night of the week. People like Patrick mm -hmm. who are, you know, watching as a hobby. Okay. And it just wasn't going to develop anything. I mean, he hasn't sent me anything since we first talked. So I'm mm -hmm. still playing the, the same episodes yeah. that I played three months ago. Yeah. And I'm not getting any viewers over it. So, you know, I had to yeah. free up the space. And that's actually where the Yerg's Tonight reruns are right now. It's like after midnight our time. Gotcha. I'm fine. The Yerg's Tonight is finally at night. Wow. Two o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon on the West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Oh, yeah, that's Dina, good. Dina's good. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, there was actually another one. Uh, uh, the guy that um, followed you, um, he also is, he's at a spot where he's really concentrating on developing everything he's doing. Oh, nice. So I get it. He had to basically triage 
and he put us on a way back burner, you know, oh, okay. even set us on a warming tray off to the side somewhere. And, and it's, it's unfortunate because he's got, he's also kind of boring, <laughs> but he's got interesting people and, and industry leaders. Nice. Um, and I would have, you know, and I don't mean like, I don't mean like David Beckmeyer boring, but that's kind of the purpose of what his show should be considering mm -hmm. he's talking about anchor management. Right. This guy's talking about life coaching and being energetic and yeah. you know, you can fall asleep to him. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, it, it's time to, and there's plenty of other people out there. You know, I can get somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if, if, and you don't have to constantly take part in anything we do, but you know, show us that you're alive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep, and, and that reminds and, uh, me, I have a half a dozen or so podcast op episodes to send to you. Good, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. finally getting anyway. caught up with the playlist. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad to know you're not chomping at the bit because I get pretty um, overwhelmed with other things. So, and yeah, you're I always have, on my mind. Been, yeah, bye -bye. You, you've been sending regularly. So I have plenty of episodes from you. If you got to take a break and get caught oh, up on thanks. other things, you'll be fine. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks. I'll get back to it, and it doesn't take that long. I but, just uh, Leslie, I want to get on. Oh uh, yes, I, yes. Can I lean? Yes, Leslie, I want to get on. I want to say there was somebody else that really caught my eye um, from the ex via the expression. Yeah, I um, have had. Um, who else have I had? I have. Most recently, um, oh, oh, the I know, Pester, uh, um, um, Pastor Bob. Um, no, um, I keep forgetting his name. The teacher from the high school, um, the audio video teacher from the high school. Oh, Bill Jerkowski. Yes, 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 yes. I will get those two up for you. There yeah, are a couple. Two. I mean, I'll send them. But I did one with uh, Mel Roth. And uh, oh, Jim wow, Boyer, really? and Jim Boyer, because they are in a subscription drive for the Boyertown ambulance. And then I did one. Jim uh, Boyer, pardon me. Jim uh, Boyer, not the bank guy. He passed a long time okay. ago. Okay, because because yeah, because yeah, I was going to say that's Dan Boyer. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's that too, and he's still around. Yeah, yeah. yeah but his yeah. brother Jim K. Um, passed yeah, a long okay. time ago, before his time. Yeah. Anyway, so I um, did an episode with Jim Boyer and Mel Roth. And Mel Roth, I remember being a young girl and in, in the audience at the old auditorium. And she was in some kind of recital, dance recital, twirling recital, I don't know. But as a young girl, and she's younger you than I am. on 4th Street. Yes. The building anyway, on, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a young girl and she's younger than I am, but I remember watching her and thinking she's a star. She is an absolute star. So I've been enthralled with Mel Roth and her ability for decades, decades. So Hi. anyway, I did a whole podcast episode just with her, which I really like. And I think she's going to like it too. I mean, she's got quite a resume. But yeah. what fascinated me most was that she was willing to talk about her um, her son, Chase. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that was an inspiring part of our podcast. I absolutely loved it. So I'm eager for that one. That'll be out, I can't remember, sometime in February is when it's scheduled. But I think people will really respond to that one a lot because they know Roth, they, uh, they know Mel, they admire Mel, and they know about Chase and, you know, that tug, you know, his situation tugs at their hearts. And I, I just think it'll be a, an amazing episode. Well, well attended as it were. And then I also did one yeah. about Jim Boyer, the ambulance I forget what his name is, uh, what his title is. Um, he told me and I've already forgotten. But anyway, I did one of them. So three of them are around those two people. And then I so did is one. The, I was thinking about this the other day. What? Are the, in fact, I was reading, I, I think I was reading the uh, historical thing that uh, you and Leslie yep. put in the yes. Boyer's Transgression about yes. Boyer's store catching fire. Yes, yes, yes. Is 
are, are the fire departments and ambulance service in the Boyertown area still volunteer? Mostly. Mm -hmm. Now, Jim wow. is paid, but it's still mostly volunteer. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Wow. But of course, like everything else, volunteer wise, everything else, you know, they're losing, they're losing members, they're losing volunteers, and it's harder and harder to maintain yeah. their, you know, maintain their services, which is, and they rely on their subscription drive. So we wanted to make sure they got plenty of attention um, so that folks would remember well, yeah, to sign okay. up because it's important. Yep. <clears throat> um, do something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do like a voiceover thing. Uh, if you want to do, because I do all of them for the station. Okay. So if you want to do a voiceover for it, you know more about it anyway. I'll play okay. that on, on the radio station. Okay. With, okay. Uh, well, let me, okay. Let me, let me give us some thought exactly what I want to say and get the details yeah, right. You don't have to do it right um, now. But um, meanwhile, I will get also their, send get their you. For it. Yeah. But also I will send you, even though it's not dropped yet, for be inspired, I'll send it to you, you know, so that maybe you can help out somehow. Anyway, yeah. so there's that. Yeah. And then um, also not dropped is a, an episode I did with Pastor Bob Mockamer. And um, I. Good Shepherd or St. John's or which one? St. John's, St. John's. Yeah. And that happened because Charles had called me. Did I tell you this? Charles Haddad called me a few days passed. before he passed. He called yeah. me a couple of days before he passed and said, all right, Jane, I agree. I will do a Be Inspired podcast with you. He had been refusing because he didn't want it to be his eulogy. Anyway, he called me a couple of days before he died and oh. said, I will. <laughs> I will do a podcast episode with you, but I want to do it with Pastor Bob Mockamer from the St. John's Lutheran Church. So, of course... You know, he called me on Wednesday morning and he died Saturday morning. And so I felt it was it was necessary in light of the circumstances that I get together with Pastor Bob really quite yeah. soon. So yeah. I have that one in the bag, as it were, in the bank. And yeah. um, that one will be published sometime in February as well. But fascinating story. Learned a lot some of which we discussed on the episode and some of which we probably never will. But nonetheless, I have that one to send to you. And of course, also Bill Cherkasky. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a yeah. lot going on. And I'm meeting on Friday with um, Diane. Uh, I think she goes by Duderman now. Anyway, she did one of the Our Bear Feeder Bears as an artist and ended up in New York City studying for a couple of years. And her life just kind of changed dramatically since the last time I saw her, which has been years. But I'm eager to find out what's up with her. So it'll be an interesting episode for me. Um, what was her name before? Uh, if I would have known her. McKee. Diana McKee. M C K E E Diana McKee. Her ma maiden name is Duderman, and she went back to yeah. it after her divorce. Yeah, no, so, don't know her. Yeah, I'm assuming divorce, uh, but I don't. I'll learn that on Friday. So anyway, yeah. there's that. So yeah, so uh, I have promised Leslie that I have all these episodes, be in pod, be inspired episodes that I've recorded about people in the area, and I haven't written them up for expression for months so oh, wow. i did you know I, did, I noticed that actually i committed I look to that every friday yeah and leslie said jane you haven't done one of these for a while and it's like well there are a couple way back in history that i'm that 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 are in the bank and we haven't just released yet but i realize i need to get with it because i have a lot of articles to put together i've got to get back to work so i yeah, spent most of today contributing there too yeah I spent most of today uh, writing up, re-listening to the podcast episode, and then writing up something on one of our artists, Jim Meehan, who's just amazing. You may have noticed his work when you were there. It's diff more different than anything else, and people really respond to it. Did you so talk anyway, to him before? Did you talk no, to him before? No, no, no. This is the first time. Yeah. Huh. Because the name does sound familiar. It must be from I, his work then. 
I recorded him and released the episode. So you, if you listen to it, you're aware of him, but I haven't written the article yet. I'm in the process oh, okay. of yeah. it. So then I heard yeah. the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you listen to the episode. So I'm trying to translate yeah. that now into a piece of writing. Anyway, there's that. And God love me. I can't remember who else, but lots yeah, to I, do, I lots to do. And I've got to get myself harnessed to my computer to do some writing. I've been really kind of bad. But the great news is also that I've been getting responses for my I Am Proud project, for which I got funding from Berks County Community F Foundation. People are sending me stuff and suggesting- What is the deadline things. for that? Because I wanted to contribute to that. Well, I put a March too. 1st deadline on it, but I'm, and that's when I'm, you know, sometime in April, I'm going to start publishing things that people have sent me, but it's going to be an ongoing project. So Great. March 1st is the dedicated deadline. And I am, you know, I will start sometime in April once I get everything edited and under control. And I'd like to find artwork for all of the pieces too, but I might, I might skip that part. I'm just not sure yet. So Anyway, um, I have to spend time corralling my artists is what I have to do. So there's that. But today's episode, what I wanted to talk about, and it kind of fits with something we already, we mentioned just a minute or two ago, and that is the decline in attendance. So yeah. not only are we declining in attendance in our volunteers for fire and EMT kinds of things, um, we are declining attendance in our civic groups like Rotary and Lions and all those um, to the point where they may go away like the, like the Kiwanis Club did here in Boyertown. At one point when I was still teaching, the Kiwanis Club was a big deal in Boyertown and anybody who was anybody belonged to the Kiwanis and did volunteer work with the Kiwanis Club and that club no longer exists in Boyertown which is really wow. a shame because a lot of the students, you know, did service uh, for the key club. It was back then, back yeah. in the day, did service hours with the key club. And, you know, we're part of the community because of that. And it's okay. a shame not only to to lose the adult volunteers, but it's a shame to you to, to lose the student volunteers. But in addition to that, you know, I had some um, from our buddy Craig, had a couple of pieces, um, one in particular, in which he talks about the decline of attendance in churches in the area. And of course, my pastor friends have been, you know, have been sad about that for many, many years. But what Craig did in his piece of writing for the Boyertown Area Expression was talk about why people are not attending. And so I thought maybe we could just talk a little bit about some of the excuses or the reasons that people are not attending. Um, I'll talk about mine and maybe you can talk about yours yeah, uh, at some point. But mine happened as a result of <laughs> all the projects that I invented for myself to be social or not to be yeah. social, but to to all the projects I invented myself that involve being social and creative for a number of years. Um, well, teaching was so demanding in terms of time. Um, I mean, not to mention the regular school school day, but at night I'd come home and begin my real work teaching, you know, planning lessons and, yeah. You know, communicating with parents and communicating with, you know, with with uh, with administrators and doing all kinds of paperwork for kids who were not doing well and wanting to inform. Them. It's just unending, just absolutely unending. And so I gave myself the excuse that I needed time to recharge. I needed self-love time. I need self-care time. And so I'd stay in my pajamas on Sunday as long as I possibly could. And then, and I had a family and I had little kids, you know, and yeah. while I took them to Sunday school and, you know, was a Sunday school teacher in Jeff's class for a while and um, had them, you know, what do you say, baptized and, and whatever that confirmed all those kinds yeah. of things yeah. when they were ready because my husband insisted <laughs> on that. Anyway, so I did all the good parent 
kinds of things. But when it was left up to me, I stayed home in my pajamas. Okay. Until um, Amy left for college. And then I joined the choir because I, I love to sing and was a vocal student for a long time. And when I was in junior high and high school, I used to go to like the Rotary Club and sing. Um, my piano and vocal teacher would go with me and she'd play the piano and I'd entertain the gentleman, which it really was um, mostly or all gentlemen at that particular time. Anyway, I was the entertainment uh, singing wise uh, for a number of years when I was young. So I always liked to sing and I, I hated giving it up. And so when Amy left, I had some time. So I went back to church and joined the choir and I loved it. What I Which loved, church did you belong with? Which church well, did your family belong to? I grew up in St. John's Lutheran Church, but then when I got married, um, Paul was very, um, he really liked his pastor at the Methodist Church. And so we ended up um, joining the St. Andrew's Methodist St. Andrews. Church here in New Berlin. In, in New Berlin. So yeah. I joined, I, I joined the choir and had a wonderful time. And what I, you know, I loved, I just loved singing. I mean, I just love singing because it brings joy to me personally and internally. And I would carry those songs that were always very positive. I would carry those songs with me in my head, you know, like you get these worms from, yeah. you know, yeah, from yeah. listening to music, they'd be in my head all week long. And it was such a joyful experience for me. I loved it. But then um, I invited, uh, Paul and I invented the Bear Fever Project. And once yeah. again, it in addition to teaching, it added yet another level of effort and responsibility and time and so forth into my day. And once again, I thought I need a day where I don't have to go anywhere or see anybody. And that day became Sunday. So <clears throat> the first year I decided, and I, I, I sang, I think, with them for like about seven years or something like that. May have been longer, may have been a little shorter, I don't know. But the first year that I decided I wasn't going to go, I wasn't going to be part of the choir anymore. I all but had to tie myself to the chair not to go to rehearsal because I missed it. So I really loved it. And I, I knew yeah. I would miss it so much. And so I thought what maybe, do you say, what, what, what point do you say yeah, this is about self care? And now you're point? doing more harm than good by going to something else. Well, at some point, I don't know about you, you but I'm, I'm Pardon me. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, you, oh, you have to the choir for oh, yourself, not taking it away. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to tell you is that I am an introvert. I need time alone to yeah. re to refresh. And yeah. um, while I love the singing part, it also involved being with people, more people, more time. And I, I needed time for myself just not to be in the company of people. Yeah. Teaching is overwhelmingly demanding as far as, you know, people are concerned. And yeah. while I love the singing part, it was just, I just needed time to myself. So that's what it, so that's you were what it still, became for me. You were still teaching during your choir years? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I was teaching during my choir years and doing Bear Fever and doing inside and doing a whole lot of other things. So I just needed to stay away. So it was self-care for me. Now that continues pretty much because I am still very involved with lots of projects and lots of people. And um, I'm not looking to be more involved and with more people than I have to be. And I can tell when I've had enough because I start getting irritable and I start dreading going places as opposed to being happy. And I knew I was better over Christmas because we had a couple parties to go to and um, I was ready. You know, I thought, nice. oh, I can't wait to see such and so. And I'm eager to, you know, find out what's happening here, there and everywhere. So it's a very real thing. And I, I recognize that I can tell when I need when I need time, when I need space. So those are my reasons. It's your turn. Yeah. Why don't, do you go to church on a regular basis? And if not, why not? Uh, as a kid, we did. And I dreaded it because 
I'm already getting up early five days a week. Mm -hmm. I'm not a morning person. And now I got to get up early a sixth day of the week on the seventh mm -hmm. day or whatever number it is. Mm -hmm. And later in life, yeah, I, I was baptized in Good Shepherd. Yeah. Um, we started seeing the politics in church, you know, oh. right around the time that I was going to be confirmed. Okay. And I think it was Dr. Irwin that was there at the time. Yeah, I don't know. And, and his wife was the one that ran that church, not him. And that's when we pretty much as a family said, we're going to go to dad's church, which was St. John's Hill Church mm -hmm. out in RD3, Ole slash Boyertown. Mm -hmm. It's actually in Ole Township and has a Boyertown address. <laughs> um, so whatever yeah. that means. Yeah, uh, but we had been there ever since, and then that church is UCC, United Church of Christ, mm -hmm. and the National UCC. Uh oh, congregation. I, think I know what's office coming. Okay, has okayed gays in the church, but left it up to each individual congregation mm -hmm. to make that decision for themselves. Hey gang, we did it again. We talked long enough to create an episode before actually starting the episode. So, this will be an intermission. Take your bathroom break, refill your coffee or cocktail, and we'll see you back here 